In this video, we'll talk about different types of network. We've already seen directed and undirected networks. We'll mostly deal with undirected networks in this course. These are simpler to analyze while still being capable of representing many real systems, though directed networks can be very useful, especially for applications to transport problems. The networks we have seen are simple networks. Here we have an example of a network with a self-loop on the node A and a multi-edge between the nodes C and E. Networks with self-loops and multi-edges are called non-simple. While we mostly avoid non-simple networks, there are cases, especially when detecting communities on networks, where we have self-loops. Multi-edges, on the other hand, are typically combined into a single weighted edge. This brings us nicely to a weighted network. Here's an example of one. Each of the edges is given a weight, that is a number, which represents the strength of the connection between the nodes. This is actually an undirected weighted network. An edge of weight 2 between A and B implies an edge of weight 2 between B and A as well. We can also have a weighted directed network, where the weights between A and B are not the same, necessarily, as the ones between B and A. Note that one of the edges, the one between C and D, has weight 0. Edges of weight 0 are usually considered to be the same as absent edges and are not drawn in the network diagram. A non-zero element in the weight matrix implies a connection between two nodes, and the value of the matrix element gives the weight of the edge. One of the edges, the one between A and D, has a negative weight, which is very unusual in practical applications. The weights are usually restricted to be positive. For a directed weighted network, instead of a negative weight, we would usually reverse the direction of the arrow, so a negative flow from A to B would actually be a positive flow from B to A. As well as the weight matrix, we can still write the adjacency matrix for a weighted network, with ones wherever there is a connection between two nodes. We can define the degree as before, simply the number of connections that each node has. However, for a weighted network, it's usually more useful to work with the weighted degree, which is the sum of the weights of all the edges connected to a node. This is so common that unless otherwise stated, when I say degree for a weighted network, I'll always mean weighted degree and I'll typically drop the superscript W. There are some common networks which come up repeatedly in theory and applications. Often, these are simple networks which make up part of larger networks. Here we have a network where all the nodes are connected in a loop. This is called a cycle. Since it has five nodes, you can call it a five cycle, and it's often denoted with a capital C and a subscript giving the number of nodes. The network with n nodes, where all possible edges are present other than self-edges, is called the complete graph of order n. This is usually denoted with a capital K and a subscript for the number of nodes. The most common property of a complete graph that you'll need is that the number of edges is n times n minus 1 divided by 2. Hopefully this is intuitive, as this formula has come up a number of times in different guises. For each of the n nodes, they must connect to the n minus 1 other nodes, giving n times n minus 1 edges, and we divide by 2 to avoid double counting. That is, we only count the edge from A to B, not the one from B to A. A very simple type of network is a path graph. This is just a linear string of nodes connected by a single edge. Every node has degree 2, except the n nodes. Though they seem trivial, path graphs can occur as part of larger graphs, and in particular we often want to find paths within bigger networks that have certain properties, for example the shortest path between two nodes. A very common type of network in computer science is a tree. Trees are easy to spot when they're drawn out, they look like trees. The node at the top is often called a root, and the nodes left dangling at the bottom, that is the ones with degree 1, are called leaves. There is a formal definition, but to introduce it we need two new concepts. The first is the idea of the subgraph or subnetwork. This is simply a subset of the nodes and edges of the original network, such that we only have edges between nodes in the subset. So the highlighted edges and nodes are not a valid subgraph because the edges are left dangling. They don't have any vertex to connect to within the subset. The other idea we need is that of connectedness. All the networks we've seen so far have been connected. This means that there is a way to get from any node to any other node by following the links in the network. However, what would happen to the network if this link was severed? It would split into two components. It would then be no longer possible to travel from the left component to the right component by following links in the network. We have a single network now made of two distinct pieces, and this is called a disconnected network. So formally, a tree is a connected network with n minus 1 edges, such that every subgraph has at least one vertex with degree 0 or 1. This just means that each subgraph is also a tree, and there are no cycles. Finally, let's introduce a special type of network that arises when nodes can be separated into two classes, where there are no connections between nodes in the same class, and only connections between classes. This is called a bipartite network. These arise frequently in practice. For example, if we have a number of people and a number of events, the people are one class and the events are another. We connect a person with an event if they have attended that event. 
A special operation called projection allows us to infer connections between one node set on the basis of connections in the bipartite graph. For example, by inferring a connection between two nodes on the left, say people, if they are connected to the same node on the right, say they attended the same event. This simple matching can often lead to problems which we'll discuss in the workshop.